Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're well and I hope you're having a great day. So it's just after 6am on a Saturday, but I'm off to go and collect my engine. Very early in the morning, I've got a round trip of 310 miles. The interesting bit is I'm doing it in my Hyundai Ionic full electric and it is showing a range currently of 155 miles so exactly halfway um obviously can't run it till it's empty um so all the ev naysayers out there let's see how we get on for now uh let's just get going and start clocking up the miles uh i need to be back here by one o'clock so uh yeah bit of a challenge i can't faff around either i need to go at motorway speeds so let's get going i'll update you on the journey and yeah we'll have our engine back soon and there you go just to show you we got 154 miles range if i turn off all the air con and everything we'll get 159 miles right we're an hour and 50 minutes into the journey i need a wee break and um the car needs a charge up as well so we're down to 17 percent charge 29 miles range which is not quite going to get us there it's 39 miles to go but you know it's like people that say about ev range if you like me um i need to go to the toilet long before i've run out of charge the only thing i would say about an ev is whatever you see as the advertised range you've got to obviously take into account that it's probably 20 percent less than that in winter and when you're out and about and when you're charging on the go you're only ever really going to use 70 percent of the battery because you're not going to run it down to completely flat. You're probably going to run it down to 10, 15% or something like that. And then when you recharge, you're not, it's unlikely you're going to charge above 80% because the charge rate gets really slow. Um, so yeah, let's plug in, let's get charged and I'm going to grab a coffee and go to the toilet. Right guys, there it is. We're in the garage. We've got the engine back. So now there's a few things I need to start reassembling on it. As you can see, it's all been painted. Uh, I might try and clean up the aluminium a little bit more. Um, but yeah, now it's a case of reassembling bits and we'll get the short engine back in the car. So I've got the clutch cover and that over there. I need to fit that on first, then the wok and then we'll get that fitted in the car and get the water pump on in a minute. Just wanted to show you quickly, so I mentioned in a previous video, I bought these MED, so the ones on the right hand side here are MED. Both these sets are 1.3 to 1 roller tipped rockers. The ones on the left are from Mini Sport. These are designed for a 1275, although you can get them to fit on a 998. On the right hand side, these are the ones from MED. They are specifically made for the 998 engine. They've only just started making these. When you look at them side by side, there's very subtle differences in the offset of the rocker, the roller tip on the end. I think it's probably more prevalent on that one there. If I put them like right side by side, you can see the mini spares ones. It's just off to the left hand side a bit more. This one's a bit more central. So. You can get the mini spares ones to fit on a 998, but really they're designed for a 1275. Those MED ones are absolutely beautiful. The shaft in the middle, um, these are obviously spaces in the mini spares ones, but I think you'll probably see the shaft size on the MED ones is much, much bigger. Quality of materials is better. And um, they are more expensive though, about 100 quid more expensive for the MED ones. Um, so this set is for sale, they are brand new, I've never done anything with them, literally just got them out of the box to have a look at, I'll probably put them on eBay. And then just to mention, the car looks awful at the moment, it looks dull because it is covered in condensation, today is mad, the weather is horrendous out there, and in the garage 
we're at 99% humidity. So it's warm inside or wor warmer inside the garage. As soon as I open that door, cold air comes in, it condenses on the cars. Um, so I actually have the dehumidifier running at the moment. Be interesting to see how much moisture that pulls out the air, but it's horrible and damp. Right, so one of the first bits to go back on is the clutch plate and cover and flywheel. Now, we did have a problem with this. So if you look down here, I don't know if you can see, probably see it better from the inside. The inside of this casing is all smashed up on this side. Um, it's not a problem, that's not gonna affect it in any way. But the old flywheel that come off, the back of the flywheel was completely and utterly smashed to pieces. So obviously at some stage, someone struggled to get the clutch off and they've probably put a, I don't know, scaffold pole or just a hammer or a bar through the back there and they smashed the clutch off. Now, that old original engine that was in there, we had to change the crank because the crank was all damaged on the end here. I suspect that might have been as a result of someone trying to get the clutch out in the past because it looked like maybe someone had taken like a, an angle grinder to it and literally chopped it to pieces to get it out. Um, so that meant the old flywheel was no good. So Paul found a good second-hand flywheel, which is this one here, actually looks pretty spot on, uh, and a cover. So I've just cleaned the faces up, just DA'd them with, I think that's like 80 grit. Uh, we're gonna put a new clutch in. This is the clutch that's in there. It's not worn out, but we don't know much about it. That's actually a Unipart clutch, um, but we're going for a brand new, Borg and Beck clutch, Borg, Borg and Beck are good. And obviously that just slots in there, the cover goes on. Line it all up and then you tighten up the bolts once it's all aligned, don't tighten them up first. So that goes in there nicely. It's a little bit confusing, I assume they use these clutch plates in other cars because it says gearbox size on it. Um, which if you think about it, when that goes on the engine, that's not the gearbox side at all, that's pointing towards the offside front wing. Um, so yeah, that might confuse some people, but I would imagine if you were using this in another car and it was in line, then obviously the gearbox would be, yeah, would be that way. So let me get that plonked on. Um, we've got a new rear main. We've got the uh, cover for the rear main as well. The old rear main was leaking. So the old clutch that come out of this car, it wasn't heavily contaminated, but it was quite black, um, which usually indicates a bit of oil has got onto it in the past. So we're gonna put it in very, very minimal amount of anti-seize on the splines, because if you overdo it, it sprays out and then damages your clutch in that way or contaminates it. So we're gonna get that clutch on. Right, just a bit more progress as we go along, because I've just been getting on with things. So the clutch and the flywheel, everything like that is all on and all talked up now. The wax had a bit of an overhaul. Um, this pin here, had worn out um, quite badly. Um, I've got the old one, let me just have a look. Uh, yeah, I have. So there's the old one there, you can see the wear in it. So luckily, in my bits and bobs, I had a brand new pin, so brand new pin in there. All the wax all tightened up, I'm missing a couple of bolts, not sure where they are. Um, got the new engine mount on the bottom here, all this yoke's all ready to go. Uh, oil pressure switches in, we've got the oil filter houses on, uh, Frank pulley nut is on and the lock tabs locked over, one goes in that way, one goes on the flat of the bolt, I'm going to fit the water pump in a minute, just about put the oil filter on, I've primed the oil filter so I've filled it up with oil, let it soak in before I put it on the engine, it just gives that, you know, extra few seconds of not having to crank it with no oil in the engine so that will get the oil around quicker and the oil I'm using is my own brand <laughs> uh, Miller's Classic 2050 right so lots of faffing around today but as you can see the engine's up on the hoist and it's ready to go in shouldn't be too difficult to be honest there's a few bits and bobs that have caught me out that I need to order up from mini speed spares um, but they don't let me stop putting the engine in so yeah, it's quite a milestone this. So uh, yeah, we'll get some protection on the inside of there. I've got the pot joints in already, so I need to just push the drive shafts in when we're in. I need the, I've got the gaskets for this, but I don't have the little O-rings which for the bolts, but I can put them on um, once the engine's in the car. So yeah, 
There's probably a few bits that I would have probably spent a little bit time. I mean, it's ironic, it really is, that I've been doing this for two years and now I'm kind of rushing around a little bit to get to get bits finished on it. Um, Paul's coming down next weekend to bring the head down, so I need to get the engine back in so we can put the head on next weekend and uh, get it running. So there's quite a few bits to do in between. The worst bit is stuff like the radiator and that. I want to paint, but the paint takes hours and hours, days to dry actually, like the Hammerite right, enamel paint. So anyway, let me get a camera on, let's get this engine in. There we go then, the engine is in and it's back on all fours. Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad to do to be honest. The only thing, I just keep losing things and can't find things at the moment. Roll pin for the gear selector. I mean, I wouldn't have thrown that away. I'd have put it somewhere safe. Just where is that safe place? So I think that's uh, me for today. Like I say, I've just got lots of bits and bobs that I need to get cleaned up. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, great to see the engine back in, um, this is actually a good idea, Paul done this, so when you've got the head gasket in the plastic wrapper you can just pierce the holes through it and it acts as a nice cover, stop anything dropping down into the bores, um, obviously when you want to use it take the plastic off, but it works quite nicely that, but it looks much better with an engine in there and uh, yeah, can't wait to get it finished.